in this tutorial series, I'm going to talk about three or four, maybe even five different InDesign files and show you how pathfinders work in this program. Pathfinders are ways to combine multiple shapes into one larger shape. So I'm gonna to go to open and right here in chapter nine, let's go down here. Uh, chapter nine, folder two, I've got five different files here. So I'm gonna start on number one. And I just have a couple of simple shapes. So notice right here when I zoom in, these shapes are not connected. Okay, so I'm gonna select this area with my black arrow and I can come down to Object Menu, Pathfinder, and you'll notice Pathfinder is all grayed out because remember, it's combining multiple shapes. So I can say Paths and close up the path. There we go, the top will connect to create a closed border. And I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Object, let's see, Pathfinder won't work, Paths, I can say close or join, either one. It'll do the same thing. But what do I do with these shapes? Why do I have multiple shapes here? Well, I'm gonna take this circle and put it up. I'm gonna take this oval and kind of crisscross them. And then I'll take this one down here. And let's go outside and I can rotate that. There we go. Let's put that right in there so and let's put this one over here I'll rotate it and maybe I'll stretch that out like that like a little waving character hello okay so what I can do is click on all these and I want to combine them all into one big character shape so when I select all of them and I'll set the stroke weight to three, just so you can see they're all the same. I go to Window Menu, Object and Layout, Pathfinder. This is the same Pathfinder panel you have in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so if I select multiple shapes, I can combine them or add them together. Add means combines selected objects into one. So notice all the overlapping shapes here. So when I say combine or add, now I've got one big character shape. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. Let's go to file and open again and we'll take basic pathfinders like this one. Okay, what I'm gonna do with this is turn simple squares and circles into a unique design. So I'm gonna take this square and I'm gonna rotate this. Let's just go outside and I'll rotate it by holding shift. I can rotate it exactly 45 degrees right there. I'm gonna take this circle and drag it right into here. So I wanna put that circle kinda Right in those spaces here, I'll hit my arrow keys just to nudge that into that space right there. Okay, so this line kind of comes right off the edge of the circle, same thing right there. Shift key and Option key, and I'll make a copy. Now again, I can use the arrow keys just to nudge that over so I kind of get that tangent point right there. Kind of see what's happening there. I'm gonna take this circle drag it over halfway in, halfway out, hold shift and option, drag it half in and half out. But I wanna move it a little further. So I'll hit the left arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We'll do this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, so now I've got these two combined shapes. So I'm gonna select these three and I wanna take the blue circles and carve them out of the blue square. So I'm gonna say minus front or subtract. It takes the frontmost objects and subtracts them out of the uh, bottom one. Now I'm gonna take these three objects 
and add them together. And then I can put this shape right on top like that. Select all those shapes, add them together, and there's a spade design from playing cards. And all I had to draw was two squares and two circles, but knowing how to combine them, I can make a really unique shape from smaller shapes. So I'm gonna close that up. Let's go to file and open again. We'll take, oh, there we go, the spade pathfinder. I guess I just did that. Okay, here's another version of it. And I kind of drew these a little better. So I already started with the diamond. So let's just drag this right up here. Drag it in and move that over again. Do a little practice. Drag this over so I get those little tangent points. Drag this one halfway in, this one halfway in. Select, subtract, select and add. I can go right up here, rotate, rotate, drag it back down, select and add. And there's the spade design again. Combining multiple shapes into one final shape. Didn't know I had that in there. So, okay, let's go to file and open spade design, spade design again. Gotcha, okay. What I wanna do is have this red zigzag shape show up only in the black parts of the spade. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is click and drag this over with shift and option. I wanna copy right there. I'll just hit W so you can see it. Okay, and I'm gonna select these two and I wanna do this one right here, it's called intersect. I'm gonna keep everywhere where they overlap and get rid of the uh, parts that are outside. So let's try it, intersect. Well, great, it only kept the parts where they overlap. So now I can click and drag this one, drag it right back over there, line it up, hit W, and I've got a design that looks like it's printed within the shape of the spade. That's a pretty cool effect. Okay, so let's close that up. The last one here, I'll go to File and Open and Pathfinder Windows. Okay, so I've created a little scan. It says recreate these picture frames and import the included picture into each one. So I'm gonna zoom in right here and I'll go in with my ellipse. I'll go to the layer called your work here and I'm gonna hold shift key and now my space bar to move this as I create it. So I'm kind of line it up right there with my space bar to move it. Great, I'm gonna hit D for default colors so we can see that. I'll start right here and hold shift and option and I'll drag a circle right out to there. D for default colors. Now I'm just gonna copy this circle. Option key for a copy, we'll put it right there. Option key for a copy, let's put it right there. Option key for a copy, and we'll put it right there. Okay, kinda nudge that into place. So now I've got four, five circles and I wanna punch a hole out of the center. So I'm gonna select all these first and on my Pathfinder, I'm gonna add them all together into one big common outline like that. And then I'm gonna come in with a rectangle. I'll hold Shift and Option to draw that from its center. D for default colors. I'm gonna to go to my black arrow and if I hold the shift key, I can rotate that at a 45 degree angle. It's close enough for what I want. And here's how you can tell this is gonna punch a hole through it. If I selected both of these shapes and I go to my swatches and I fill them with color, 
you can see this is a solid shape on top of a bigger solid shape. But if this one is on top of it, I can say subtract and punch a hole right through the middle. See? You can see right through that opening. Great. There's one shape done. Now I'm going to come over to this one. I'll go in with my ellipse again. Hold shift and option to draw from the center. I'll hit D for default colors. I'm going to switch to my rectangle frame and I'm going to start up here and just click and drag all the way down to there. D for default colors. Now what I can do is press and hold and go to the rotate tool. Okay, my reference point is on the center. So now I'm referring to the center of this rectangle. I can double click and I'm going to type 45 degrees. I'll turn on my preview to see where that's going to land. And I will rotate a copy at 45 degrees. Double click again. We'll rotate another copy. Double click again. Rotate another copy. Now I've got a bunch of objects all stacked up on top of each other. So you can see that one's blue. This one is magenta. This one is yellow. This one can be green. And this one underneath can be dark blue. So I got a bunch of shapes all sitting on top of each other. But when I select them all and go to add them all together, they all become one. I love that trick. Okay, for this rec uh, rectangle, I'm just going to click and drag right here. I can hit D for default colors, go to my black arrow, and just click and drag. And when I hold shift, I can rotate it at a perfect 45 degrees. Now I'll just pull these corners back out. Pull this edge back up right there. Double click my rotate tool and I will type a 90 degree angle to go perpendicular to this as a copy. Again, if I select and fill, select and fill, they're two different shapes. But when I select multiple shapes and I add them together, they become one. Okay, this one's kind of crazy. So what I want to do is have these areas solid in here, solid out here, and punch holes through here. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to start with a square. I'll just hold shift key right there. Okay, then I'm going to go right up to the top, hold shift and option. But first I want to hit D for default colors. Shift key and option key, and drag out like that. D for default colors. With my black arrow, I can hold shift key and rotate that at 45 degrees. I'll hold shift and just bring these back down a little bit. So I kind of match that diamond right there. Okay. Shift key and option key allows me to make a copy. And here's a great trick. If I select the top one, hold shift and select the bottom one, I can go to my rotate tool, double click, and rotate a copy at 90 degrees. So they just land right where I wanted them to land. Now here's the trick again. If I select all of them, and I'll fill them all magenta, you can kind of see where these are overlapping. But now what I'm going to do is use something called exclude right here. I'm going to take the parts where they overlap, where the diamonds overlap this square, and I'm going to punch out these little overlapping sections by excluding them right there. It's a really cool design. So now let's see what we got. Okay, if I zoom out, I can turn off the bottom layer. I'm done tracing. I can select all of these and hit D for default colors. I'll click up here and we'll make all the strokes one. But these are just shapes. I want to be able to put a photo in here. So remember, you can select everything and go to Object Content. 
I want to put graphics in there. Okay, if I hit the letter W, you can see there's a crisscross right there, there's a crisscross right there, there's a crisscross right there and there. So these are all graphics frames. Let's try it. I'll click Command D for a document. Right down here is my InDesign tutorials for Chapter 9, Pathfinder, and I'm just going to place picture number one. Well, great. That picture came in at an angle because the crisscross, it's supposed to be an X, and this one was coming up as a plus. So InDesign was recognizing the shape kind of being twisted a little bit. So what I can do is click the content grabber and I can go to the rotate field. I'll just hit the down arrow and let's rotate it back. Actually, that's twisting it on its side. So let's click right here. Rotate it, rotate it. Let's rotate it back. Okay, we can see that letter P. So let's hit the down arrow. Oops, the up arrow. Let's keep rotating this around and around. Let's bring it back to zero. There we go. All right, now my picture is nice and vertical. Right there. Okay, by combining multiple shapes, I can make a unique picture frame. This is already set up as an X, so when I hit Command D, bring in another photo, it's gonna fill that surrounding space not the opening. See, this looks like a plus, so my photo is going to come in at an angle. We'll try that. I'll select it, Command D, place another photo. And you can see that building is coming off at an angle. So if I click in the center, the content grabber, now I can look at my angle, 45 degrees. Let's set it back to zero. And now the building is nice and vertical. Click here, and everywhere you see this line cutting through, those are areas where the photo is gonna fill. So Command D, place number four, and look at that. Click once on the content grabber, set my angle back down to zero, press and hold, and now I can move my photo. If it's a little too small, I just click and drag with the shift key to blow up the photo inside and notice how it filled only those outer spaces and the interior X. So W for preview. I got some really unique shapes, graphics frames out of combining multiple smaller shapes using the Pathfinder. So I'm going to select all this and delete it. I'll hit D for default. And here's another great trick. If I start with a rectangle, hit D for default, W so you can see that is a graphic shape. After I draw the shape, now I've changed my mind. I go, wait, okay, shoot. I wanted that to be a circle, not a rectangle. I don't have to delete it. I can go to Window, Pathfinder, and it's not giving me anything. But this is a limited set of choices. If I go to Window Menu, I'm sorry, that was Object and Pathfinder. If I go to Window Menu, Object and Layout, Pathfinder, I have all these other features right down here. So I could take a square and convert it into, let's say, an ellipse. There we go. No, I want that to be a triangle instead. Wait, no, I want it to be an inverted corner. No, I want that to be a rounded corner. No, I want it to be a polygon. Okay, you have so many choices here. And that's what's great. All of these features, paths, pathfinder, convert shape, they are all shortcuts to object. Paths, pathfinder, convert shape, Got convert point right down here. You have all these features to really mess around with unique shapes here in InDesign. So keep that in mind. They have to do with pathfinders.